Hello good there. Up. And a very good afternoon. Uh, for the National, we are here at Expo 2020 Dubai. It is day three. As you can see, I have found my way once again to the fantastic Pakistan Pavilion. You might remember in my last video, I actually didn't know who the architect was and we didn't find out uh, in the process of touring the pavilion. Uh, so the pavilion staff actually got in touch with me and guess who I've got with me? Here we go. Hello there, sir. Would you like to introduce yourself? Uh, I'm Rashid Rana. Um, I'm a visual artist. I'm not an architect. And this is a very different kind of undertaking for me, I have to say. Um, building was already there and uh, the organizers uh, approached me two and a half years ago and uh, they wanted me to transform architecture into art. So this is supposed to be an artwork actually uh, and that's how we have approached it. I have to say it certainly is a fantastic piece of artwork. It doesn't come across just as a normal building doesn't it? So I'm going to keep you walking with me as we go in. It is another, I seem to only come to this pavilion when it's boiling hot uh, and the lovely, the reflection of the light also means there's a certain amount of light reflected as well, heat reflected. So we're heading this way into some shade so that we can have a bit more of a chat but, but within the shade. But look at that colour behind us now. I mean it's just so beautiful. And so tell me a little bit more about your inspiration behind how you came up with this extraordinary piece of art. Well, you have come to the land of diversity, Pakistan, that is one of the most uh, diverse countries in the world, climatically, geographically, racially, ethnically. Uh, and I think it's, this piece is uh, supposed to be a celebration of that diversity. And uh, if you look at uh, all these uh, 24,000 units, uh, this, uh, this, uh, each component, uh, they're, all, they're seemingly uh, identical but they're all fractionally different that's where the magic of this work perhaps lies that they are they come into this uh, dance of harmony uh, primarily because of the fact that uh, they are fractionally different in terms of color and size they all unique uh, but they all look seemingly uh, identical but it's basically a celebration of diversity through these colors uh, call them colors of Pakistan absolutely extraordinary to hear the ideas behind the design and to think so it was 28,000 different pieces. 24,000 and 35,000 square feet area um, and uh, so this is a spectrum of colors that you see um, and uh, uh, and then the reflectivity uh, and the printed area are, 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 are built at some angle in such a way that you get a multiplicity of view from, from all the time. It changes color, uh, it changes your experience as a, as a viewer if you walk around it. Uh, and then it gives the buildings this sense of breathing and perforation through this reflective disease. Otherwise, it's not a transparent building. Uh, it's, it's a building supposed to be without any windows to serve this function of exhibition, you know. So without any windows, without any, uh, any other such feature, the building wasn't breathing as such. So the idea was to, through reflectivity and printed image, create this complexity of view within the very simplicity. For example, in this portion that you're showing it to the audience, uh, the colors uh, sort of col come together just like, uh, well, I mean, I, I, uh, I hope that you see the cloud bonnet kind of coming of colors together reflected yeah. into each other it's so beautiful i mean really it, it is absolutely stunning and the I'm, fact I'm, I'm, I'm very happy that it has worked out the kind of positive response that we're getting it's a very different experience for me i mean i have been very fortunate to be able to show my work at museums and galleries in various parts of the world and get some appreciation for that but this is a different kind of uh, response that i'm getting yeah. it's, it's a new feeling for me like a footballer or a cricket player that when people feel that you're playing for them so that's something new for me and i am i'm totally uh, uh you know enjoying that i'm grateful grateful to the people uh, who have uh, you know uh, giving positive response to this uh, this piece and bringing them uh, here to be able to see the wonderful journey that has been curated inside. Amazing. Well, you said the word inside. We're going to head on inside now. I can't, I can't pretend I'm not quite pleased to go inside because it is very hot. So we're coming in now. Uh, thank you so much. It was such a pleasure to meet you. I really appreciate likewise, you taking the time to talk likewise, to us. Likewise. And then we're making our way in now. And as you can see, it's this. Oh, I can see again. Bye -bye. Um, <laughs> Goodbye, lovely to meet lovely you. To meet you. Bye. Bye. You might notice that the camera work is a little bit more haphazard today. That's because I'm actually doing it by hand. I don't have Sahail with me. Um, but what we're doing now is just progressing through the pavilion 
because I understand I'm going to meet the lady who is actually responsible for designing the interior. Hello, how Hello, wonderful to how meet are you. Great I'm to very meet well you. indeed. <laughs> I'm not going to stand too close to you because of course I'm not wearing no, masks. No, nor am I. <laughs> uh, nor are you, but this is for the sake of the interview, it's okay. And so I'll just check that you're in the centre of my frame. There we go. So please could you introduce yourself to uh, our viewers? Uh, my name is Noor Jahan Bilgrami and I'm the principal curator of the Inner Journey. Um, and this is called the Hidden Treasures of pa Pakistan, the Hidden Treasure. So the whole idea is to reveal to the world and to many Pakistanis who are not really in Pakistan what Pakistan is all about and the treasures that we have which have been tucked away for a long time. So that's it. And then regarding me, I'm an artist, studied textile, worked a lot in documenting all the traditional crafts, working with culture and education and so that's that in a nutshell. Fantastic. Take come with me through up to this area because this so was this one is of... connected with this, which is ah. a Quranic verse in um, our Quran which says Surah Noor. And if you can see in the translation which talks about Allah is the light of the heavens and the earth. The example of his light is like the niche within which is a lamp. So this is all to do with light. And so what I wanted to put across was the purity of a religion, which is misconception all around, and bring out the whole thing about light and its beauty, and light upon light is the uh, inspiration for this whole journey that we're going to be doing. It started off with this Quranic verse, but that took me to the fabulous monument that we have of the Mughal period, the Lahore Fort has this beautiful building which is called the Shish Mahal, which means a mirrored palace. And uh, taking inspiration from that, but using a very contemporary idiom, I've tried to sort of work with the traditional craftsmen in reviving this whole art industry of making concave mirrors. That craft had died down. And we found these old uh, sort of workshops that were blowing these fabulous bottles and creating that into mirror. And you'll see why, what happens, because then you break it and we start working on that. You want me to start? Working. Amazing. We'll walk on so, through because this is part of the whole effect and as of it. You can see this right here. That's how we've got the light. Are we going, going to make this go floor. up? Are you able to just get that? Yes. So it's sort of slightly heavy. erratic camera work for me. I do apologize for it. <laughs> That's stunning, that effect. So I have this Isn't it? Well, I you. Yes. Also, it's also a whole passage where all your senses are evoked. So if you actually take a deep breath, there's this fragrance yes. of what we call it's um, motia, and um, it's, it's a fragrance of motia. Can you smell that? I really can. So it's it, it's, it's like really jasmine. immersive. It's, it's, absolutely it's absolutely gorgeous. Yeah. So jasmine, you're surrounded by jasmine fragrance. And um, also the sound is very important. Can you hear that? So it's, very, it's meant to be very meditative and so not too much of talk, yeah. which I'm doing right now. But to show you that if you come here, I want you to see how you are coming into so many mirrors. And it's because the shape of the mirror is like that. So in the olden days, uh, you know, the whole ceiling was made of this. They would take one oil lamp which was lit and if they took it around, the whole place would be shimmering, shimmering. So as you can see, multiplicity of images that are coming through. So we worked with master craftsmen, revived the whole craft and uh, really blew it out of scale because those are really fine. And we've got this whole section of that. Plus on the other side, in the fort, in the Shish Mahal, are these miniature frescoes painting as you can see and if you go close to it it's absolutely fabulous detailing that is done I do you know it, you it, walk past I walked past I didn't even yeah. notice you this and is, I didn't notice the scent I didn't yes. notice the sound I and because that's the thing that's why you need to take the time with these absolutely. pavilions you've got to take time because it has been really labored by miniature artists who kind of really blew into the scale of what is there right now even at the fort, at the Shish Mahal. So it's just exquisite and as you go forth you'll probably see more of that. And as you can see, you're experiencing every step of yours is like, go slow. 
And there's another one. This is major painting, as you can see. Gosh, it really is fantastic. And I hadn't even noticed this, this effect. I mean, for the narcissist, it really is quite fabulous. Uh, also, you look particularly nice in this light. There you go. But, but that's a really good selfie opportunity for any visitors who want to come along. And you know how you're always looking for the Instagram opportunities. I'm actually going to take a picture of that. There we go, let's get rid of that. There we go. Right, we're going to carry on up through this. I don't know how to get rid of, I don't know how to get rid of that. So we'll just carry on. I've taken a photograph, it's going to be so there as forever. Start, like, as you start from here, from here what happens is this is actually filmed what is there in Shishmagal. So what you're seeing here at the moment, which is kind of raising up gradually, is um, an actual photography that had been filmed there by an, uh, film, a videographer. Marias, and then this is projection mapping done so that you feel you're actually enclosed in that to a point which is looking out of the floor into that hole, um, looking out through the lattice. You saw through the lattice, now the lattice should not through. So that's. <laughs> I hope you experienced it differently this time. You, there clearly has been. I have completely experienced it differently. There must be so... I hadn't realised the level of thought that had gone into every single element of oh, this yes, design. a lot of how, detailing, a lot yeah. of detailing. How many years were you... It's been three years. Really? <laughs> how does it day, feel? It I'm just, so sorry about the camera work. I'm, I'm, not, I'm not managing to be the centre of frame. Uh, and how does it feel now? <laughs> Well, it's just, you know, I'm still sort of overcoming this incredible feeling of seeing it in reality, which was just a pencil line and a thought and a concept. And to see how beautifully the public is responding to it. Yes. Because I think the main thing is how, when an artifact has that hold, um, you know, you, that dialogue to take place. So this, in this room that we have here, is the area of the landscape. It's the largest space that we have here. And so against the photography that we have, um, the Mohana boat, we have put two ancient cultures around here, which are still existing, but they go back a long, long time. So on the river Indus, you have, which comes from the mountains, we'll talk about it if there's time, on the Kalasha. But in the south is the Mohana community, which still exists, and they used to live on the boats, which was on the Indus River. So this exquisite carved boat, which has all been done by hand, and if this time, you know, we've actually documented the whole process of starting from the old archive of photographs and getting everything done. So this is fantastic how it came about. And it was done after about 55 years that they, uh, the artisan said, if you quickly look into that, that's the image of the moment that uh, it's a small scene. You see the garden. And again, this is the old archival photograph from which artists sat down and brought it all back into, as you can then see it. The next image will show you very beautifully. Absolutely extraordinary. The sense of these, these, these the tribes, the, these the long community, yeah. these communities. Yes. Absolutely. Now I know that there's someone else who I've been, who I need to meet as well. Absolute pleasure. Thank lovely. you for talking us through it. It was really, really wonderful it was to meet you. A pleasure. After I had so much fun coming before, um, it was lovely to meet you. So we're moving forward now to the third person uh, who wanted to meet us. Uh, here we go, sir. I'm gonna, as you can tell, I'm getting used to doing my own camera work. Yeah. Trying to keep people in oh, the frame. Sure, sure, sure. It's surprisingly difficult. <laughs> here we go. So, uh, sir, tell me, who are you and, and what's uh, your role here? Well, um, I'm Rizwan. I'm the pavilion director and the project director as well. So I've been associated with this project since the very beginning. And uh, finally, we've done it. It must be very exciting to see it finished and, and receiving visitors. It was unbelievable. The first day was overwhelming. I mean, the response that we got, people, we could just could not close our doors. People yeah. kept coming in, coming in, and we had like around 8,000 people uh, on the very first day. And that was awesome. Yeah. on the first day? On the first day. So we haven't had figures from Expo 2020 yet about how many people came in well, to Expo. Uh, so well, um, like 8,000. So not as number. yet, not as yet, yeah. but uh, five days before the opening, we had a test run. 20,000 people came to the Opportunity District on Monday. 
So 8,000 is not a big number for such a big space. Uh, it's yeah. a four and a half square kilometers area. It is a big area. Yeah. Yeah. I mean, that is absolutely fascinating to hear that that amazing facade is bringing, I mean, that, that's what's so clever about it, is that it's bringing in so many thousands of people because you see that sort of pop of color. Yes. Uh, and, and I mean, I mean, it's, the, it's going to be an Instagram dream. You know how like, people like to take photographs of themselves yeah. nowadays. And so uh, it is absolutely fabulous that it's drawing that many people in and they're finding out uh, all about Pakistan as yes. a consequence. Well, it... So in addition, I just uh, have a message for the audience there that um, we have a wonderful program for six months of programming. Right now, the province of Balochistan uh, has brought in their cultural toupees mm -hmm. and they're also doing a lot of business programming events. So all of you, both the families and the business people, are invited to Pakistan and our events. Uh, please follow our website for our calendar. And you're most welcome to Pakistan. There's a really good restaurant downstairs as well. <laughs> <laughs> so you can get fed as well. Uh, thank you so much for watching. Uh, I'm going to be heading over to uh, several of the other pavilions now. So uh, make sure you keep us saved in your favorite spa. And we will be making a return very shortly. But uh, for now, goodbye from the Pakistan Pavilion. It's been a pleasure reporting for you from the National.